right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, um, yeah, any anything that's uh, kind of right off the bat for anyone? Any major major uh, updates or blockers or pieces that are going on for people? Um, somebody made a call out earlier for in one of the search engine people made a call out for some front end developers. So I went through the the team database found basically everyone with front end development, full web development or anything, you know, similar stacked and then dug through everyone who was already on Slack. Cause I figured they're already kind of more involved. I went through what everyone's, um, LinkedIn's kind of graded them on like some of them are a bit more junior. Some of them are like 20 year experience. And then I actually called out and asked what level of, skill you're going to need for this because is it is it do you think it's going to be like if it's already because it was editing something that already exists is like is it and what also what languages right you just they, they came back with like the languages it need and it's not that difficult so i went and just give him like 10 names on slack going these are around these have got the skill set That's them. Right. um i've got a few people more to like uh i've not I've not dealt with any introductions. Uh, uh, Mark Graves looks like someone has already picked, plucked him out and um, dropped him into, yeah. It looks like he's already been sort of plucked out and he's been dealt with and somebody's joined because he's been invited by someone. But there's two others that seem capable, but I don't really know what to do with them yet. Okay. And I, 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 I hate just going high and then not saying anymore. I feel like that's a real cop out. So I don't know. Other than that, no, I don't really have help. Other than just I've consumed like three interesting webinars. One of them I'll send a link on to you because it was about uh, design thinking. Uh, okay, oh, design, cool. uh, design thinking, but it was about design thinking used in parenting. And I thought you'd really like it because it's really, because yeah. it's really, because it's really, it was really fun. And I'm not saying you're not good at that. I have absolutely no idea, but there's some really cool little tricks. I was like, I, ha I have that personality, but not everyone does. But sometimes it's just, actually, that's really clever. Yeah, so I thought you might like it. No, I'd love to check out, I'll, I'll send links when I find, when they get uploaded and shit. Good stuff. Yeah. How about you, Evgeny? How are things going on your end? Can you hear me? Yep. The, uh, so just right now, I finally have some time to dedicate to the project. Uh, and uh, just think, I so you're you're cutting in and out a little bit. Although, uh, as we discussed yesterday, I will uh, write down questions for the typical questions for each episode that we can uh, share with team leaders. I will do it in a travel card and share in the Slack uh, with everyone, so you and everybody else can uh, add something. Uh, edit it. Feel free. Every, everything I write, feel free to edit it because my English. Uh, sure, is, sure. It's not my first. It's not, not my first. No, that's great. Um, we've also we've been talking a little bit, Arthur and I today, about trying to get both for the podcast, but also you know whether whether it's for webinars or other pieces, uh, who some of the big thinkers are who we might want to be trying to to get in touch with. Um, so for both of you, that's something to just kind of give that a little bit of thought about who some of the people are. So, you know, I'm thinking uh, Douglas Hofstetter and Ray Kurzweil are people who are really big in terms of the artificial intelligence world um, and kind of a bit with machine learning and, and nature of consciousness kind of stuff. But we can, we can think about who would be, you know, if you had a dream panel of different people who we could talk to, who would those people be? And then we can figure out what are the strategies for maybe trying to get in touch with some of them. Um, I was just talking to Arthur about, because, about Alan Alda. Oh, Alan that would be amazing. Al Alan Aldo is a really good communicator, and I think and he is very much about science communication. So I've got his yeah. audio book, and I've listened to it, and, I've, and it's just he, I listen to his podcast sometimes, and he's not a science specialist. He's got a personality that very much wants to learn. And yeah. I think even if, if nothing else, if only our community watches it, there'll be some lessons learned. I'm a big enjoyer of communications as a, as a thought train. And... Yeah people who are very high level thinkers don't think about communicating that as a skill that they need to improve on. And I think it's definitely something, and it would be, it'd have some really interesting cross pollination points. Um, Tim Berners-Lee, we were just talking about, would be an amazing person to have a discussion with because you know, he's, he's Tim fucking Berners-Lee, you know? <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a given. I mean, he's on about Russell Brand. I can sort of see it, especially because Russell Brand has been becoming more and more, 
systemic thinking and political, but not aggressively political. Is that Maybe, yeah. As a, yeah, so I don't know. But um, it, I was else? talking about a bit the Russell Brand thing as well. But, but for, for me, I'm a little worried just because he's brilliant, but he, he goes in so many directions. So he's very mercurial. Um, yeah, he's hard, he's hard to and, track for some people. In, and, I mean, and I think I enjoy it would be hard him, to have I'm an like apolitical. That. Right. I think it would be hard to have uh, an apolitical conversation with him. <laughs> yeah, um, I really enjoy um, Paul Mason's writing and Paul Mason's talks, and he's a very interesting. He comes from an. Uh, he used to, I think he was a political economist um, journalist for a long time. Okay. And and he and he comes from, but he kind of takes the world of economics and he's got a very heterodox way of looking at things and he, yeah. and he looks at things in a big systemic way rather than you know following the the rules of the road right now so i think he would be really i mean i'd just love to fucking chat with him let's be honest this is just yeah, like yeah, yeah it yeah. sounds like I'm, I'm i'm you know if i get ever chose to just like sitting and listening to someone and being able to ask questions yeah, yeah. someone like that would be really cool because he's british as well and that's not not obviously a big deal but there's just some people are going to be bigger in british Britain than and not international and vice versa. So I think hitting different points would be interesting. How about you, Evgeny? Is there any kind of top of your mind of people who you think might be related, who'd be interesting to, to have on? A good question about uh, our audience, uh, for whom we like. You're cutting in and out there again a little bit. Can you hear me? Can you hear me yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I said you raised a good question about who who is uh, like typical list like who, what our external audience, uh, who are those people, and based on those we should uh, build our external communication strategy. And uh, that's what I wanted to say is that um, I I got some some feedback from our first podcast episode from my friends, friends of my friends. And uh, for them, it's uh, a little bit complicated because we throw terms like NLP. Uh, right. like, uh, we we uh, we really should uh, think and synchronize on who who uh, for whom we do our external communication. Yeah, yeah. It goes back to Alan Alda's communications, making it as clear and easy to understand for as many people as possible. Yeah, and, and, and well, but, who who are our uh, like typical listener or like person we communicate with? Uh, we should I think we should think uh, based on uh, goals. Why yeah. why would we? Yeah. What we want from our external communication team, uh, and then find right audience for this. Right. Focus on on this. Uh, uh, and that's what I wanted to discuss and ask you because I feel like. Right now, our main fo like people who listen at least podcasts is people. It's kind of onboarding. Uh, people who wants to join us and they want to understand what's going on instead of reading all the Slack uh, channels before they join us, they have website or podcast. It's not not much. Yep. I mean, to a certain extent. Um... The way I look at it is because unlike most organizations, you can't just turn up and join. Like no, there's very few people who have work like that. But um, the way I look at it is a good podcast usually should have either a, a very specific target or target audience that's different from the people who are going to be on it. But most really good podcasts, they're actually just targeted at themselves. Like a lot of podcasters who just make really good podcasts, just make really good podcasts that they would have enjoyed that just doesn't exist right now. And um, so I think if we concentrate on entertaining ourselves and being making it interesting for us, the people who find it interesting will hopefully turn up and find think, it interesting on their own. Trying to trying to make it like mainstream is just a too much. It's just a it's just a big ask because the, there's that much attention you can't you just can't aim for that so it'd be better just aim it for the people who might be you know superficially interested might be might come across it from a discussion or read read an article and then they can it might be their first like i said their first touch point of finding out a bit more what we do why we do it how we do it i mean unlike a lot of podcasts um what especially the ones i listen to um our podcasts especially the ones where we're talking about what we're doing right now they're going to go out a day real quick. Unlike a really good podcast that, you know, you could listen to four years later 
and be like, I really enjoyed that. And he absolutely, you know, sometimes if it's about like day to day politics or like the situation right now, um, but ours are going to go out of date, but also to a certain extent, they're going to be like a historical posterity of where yeah, we that's, are. And I, I, that's I, I, an interesting way of documenting it. I, I think, and, and, I, and I might actually say, like, I, I would advocate for, I think making a popular crowd is a good thing. I think that what we're doing, I think there's a compelling story behind what we're doing that can be interesting to people who are far beyond that sort of data analysis crowd. And I think that if we can tap into telling that story in the right way, that's mm -hmm. a lot of the, the second and third hand contacts that we're otherwise not getting. As an example, uh, like my, my cousin Rainey is not at all into data analysis. That's utterly not his thing. Um, but he's been fascinated by hearing about what we're doing. He's the guy who got us in touch with the person who's doing the critical response stuff for the Southeastern states because he was able to, to get sufficiently excited about what we're doing. Um, yeah. that, I, know, I know some people who would be totally interested in what you're doing. And so I think, I think my, my goals with it would, would be a little bit of like establishing ourselves as something that's interesting and up and coming that, that's happening, giving a sufficient taste of, of what we're doing for people to, to get it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, making it something that, that is kind of a little bit more, more publicly digestible. Uh, Shannon's having some trouble getting in. I'm just going to see it's, it's giving her issues with the, you, you post, you post link on this call in general channel, not in communication channel. Is it posted it on calm general. Let me just take a look. Oh, bizarre. Um, sorry, I was, I was channel switching. And so let me, uh, let me see. There we go. Yeah, but and I, and I love sorry, yeah. Okay, I, what I wanted, what I wanted to say is it, uh, that it feels like we focus on, uh, if it's, even if it's external communication, we do it as internal communication, like, um, to, and to think, we, we should think more like secondhand people, like friends of our members who yeah. want to, they want to, to, to follow us, but they don't want to join because now the only way to, jo to follow what's going on uh, has been inside it. Is yeah, it's be inside. Uh, so, uh, what 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 other options they have? Maybe some like podcast is only is only one option for now, uh, and uh, maybe we should establish some kind of email subscription uh, because not everybody listens to podcast. But when we think about people, it's like I should be think some friend of like our okay. members. Uh, and for, for what reason they, they follow us? For someone follow just because it's an interesting experiment as an organization. Someone really wants to follow the product uh, uh, and updates with the product. Uh, it's, it will figure out with, with time when we get yeah. more. I, I think all of those are pieces. To me, I think a piece of it is that there's, there's, a, there's a compelling story that's interesting to people about Again, that's just, it's like a ragtag, anyone who shows up, shows up, group of people taking on something that is massive and then watching. So like, how, do, how are they doing that? And what, are, what, how are they pulling together? And what are the challenges? And I think, I think there's a bunch of story there to tell that's-, that, that's Absolutely. I, I definitely, I mean, I, I part of the reason why I'm here is because it's a wildly fucking weird story. And, I de and unlike some people where some people want to watch the crazy story from the outside, I want to get right up in his yeah, face yeah. <laughs> and find out about all this crazy story. I am honestly just watching 80% of the time. I just want to know what everybody's doing and understand it and try and get to the point of just as a story as a you know i'm not i'm not planning to write a book but i feel like this is a book in its making i'm just living inside right now i'm just like there's yeah. too much weirdness and wonderfulness and and yeah it is just like there's a ragtag group of experts and non-experts and just people who want to try and unlike so many other systems and so many other 
institutions that there is like so many barriers to entry and it's not intentional, you know, cause it's, it's about concentrating and validating and making sure people are, you know, are intellectually at a standard to understand the discussion or have the background to be able to prove it. And the difference is, even though it's messy and it's hard, literally anyone can turn up no we can't necessarily yeah. make use of everyone right now but even if you just wanted to turn up and watch from the inside you're allowed you can come in you can join any call you can you can ask questions live if you wanted to if you've got the inclination to and that's just a very hyper transparent way of working which yeah. is interesting all on its own I think I think that there's something that's timely about like in a couple of ways there's there's pieces of what we're doing are a snapshot of what's going on in the world right now. So obviously with pandemic, the, the, we're, we're enmeshed in trying to deal with that. And that's something that is critical. But beyond that, I think that there is a huge movement and confusion in the world right now about what, uh, what, are, what are new ways to work? What are things that are outside of the corporate model that are outside of the traditional volunteer model? And I think what we're doing here, again, like we've talked about before, we're not even sure yet exactly what it is but we're, we're checking it out. And I think that there's going to be, you know, I don't know if you know the, the, uh, the old paper, the cathedral in the bazaar, but like that's one of the papers that when the open source movement was just kind of starting up, it was like one of the seminal works that gelled yeah. in the movement because people read it and they're like, yeah, yeah, that, the bazaar, that's what we want to be doing. How, how, do I, how do we create that? I think we're doing something similar. And I think that part of the thing, and the podcast can be a powerful tool for that as we're trying to figure out how do you make this kind of radically empowered self-organizing global place where anybody can show up because they believe in a certain issue, a certain cause and, and have it be real that like, yeah, anyone can step up. Like someone can be watching this video on YouTube and say, okay, that I, I'm in, I'm, I'm hooked. Let's find out. And a week later they can be in charge of a team and doing something that, that is substantially moving the project forward. And I think that's, I mean, yeah. And, I mean, rare. I mean, I, the way I look at it is, is like, the amount of times I'm in conversations with, you know, this person's a researcher at this super high end institute and that person's a professor there and that person's an expert in a different field and this person runs a company. And I'm here like, I'm like, I'm a teach. I'm not even a teacher. I'm a TA for special needs kids. I'm like way out of my pay grade, but I can still contribute and nobody goes, what the fuck do you know? Nobody right. does that. I mean, you've got to, you've got to bring something good. You've got to say something that's useful or relevant, but no one automatically dismisses you because, I mean, the amount of times people are like, oh no, you're really amazing. I'm like, I don't feel amazing. I don't feel like an idiot walking around smart people all day long. But, you know, somehow yeah. that's a, a, a useful thing to bring. I don't understand <laughs> why right now, but it supposedly is. And I'm trying to help where I can and I'm not doing enough and I'm constantly going, I oh, should be doing more, but you know, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think, I think that this is good, a little bit of good exploration of some of the stuff that I think we can hit in the podcast and that we can hit in other ways with our messaging. I'm actually, I'm going to make sure that our, our PR team has a chance to look at this video uh, because this is really, this, this is some core exploration of some of the messaging that, that I think we, we can. Mm -hmm. And it's that mixture, like we want to be getting across to the public, hey, we're here, this is exciting, getting that historical footage. I like how you put that, Tyler, in terms of historical footage, because I think it is going to have that kind of a feel. But also something that can let the people who we would love to be connecting with, if they get their hands on it and see what we're doing, so they're like, okay, yeah, they're, they're approaching things from a bit of a weird angle. It's not the way that our organization works, but they seem to be doing something that seems to be effective. And so like, maybe we want to reach out to them. Maybe it would be interesting to, to have a conversation with them. So, so making it clear that we are, uh, we're operating at a higher capacity than a quick look at the crazy chaos of what we are would, would indicate. Yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's basically, it's got, and I've never done a hackathon. I've seen it from the outside. I've never done a hackathon because I'm not a code, I'm not a good enough coder to be able to do anything quickly. I'd, I'd do everything so slow that I'd be just a, a liability. Um, but I, I've, I'm, I'm just, I think I'm very good at synthesizing lots of different things that are going on and making sure that they make sense to each other or they're at least rowing in the same direction. That's, I think the only thing I actually feel like I'm good at is just yeah. taking on a rough idea of what everyone's doing and making sure that they're not all bumping into each other too hard. 
Do you blog so just, at all, Tyler? I'm, no, I've been thinking okay. about it, but I've just, I've never been a very confident, I've, I mean, up until like the last few years with a lot of politics, I've never really been a confident writer. And I, 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 when it comes to writing, I, I really overthink. I communicate much more confidently by speaking than I do by writing. I like to think I'm quite good at writing, but it's so like, it's one of them things I have thought about, like maybe blogging, but I have no idea what a blog and it'd be just everywhere because honestly, I, I'm interested in like human sexuality and, and the way people see things. And I just, I, I analyze everything the, through the same lens of like, why, why do people follow them rules? Is, are they the rule and are them rules useful? Are, are societal norms helpful? Do they, do they fit? Do they fit everyone? Do they not fit everyone? And I do that with, everything i do that with education i do that with politics i do that with science i do that with psychology i'm just constantly like, wanting to look at everything and it's very very disparate because of it because <laughs> if, if you're interested in trying at some point just putting together some sort of um little blog about what we're doing here like if, if you wanted someone to look over it or anything like that i'd be happy to but because because of the way that you're weaving in and out of all of the different areas and i think mm -hmm the perspective that you're bringing as being like, like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily a genius coder. I like, I'm, I'm not operating in those medical circles, but, but like I'm here and I'm fascinated by what else is going on and I can follow it all. Like I can track what's happening. Um, and because you're right on that front line in terms of meeting the people as they're coming in and getting them kind of acclimatized to what's happening here and then sent off to the right spots. Um, I think that, that, you could tell some some interesting stories that way, and that that could that could be something that could be useful for the group. As well as, I'm trying to think how can we start getting more people who are involved to be writing about what's going on here, because I think that mm -hmm. different voices would be something that we would benefit from. Yeah, I mean, we could end of day we could throw up a blog space on the website without much difficulty. That's right. And and if we could open up the blog space to be able to have it's kind of content marketing, but it's not marketing because it's literally just talking. I suppose it is marketing in its own, own form because yeah, discussing anything is a form of marketing. But it's more like organic marketing rather than like really contrived, well polished stuff. Yeah. And and um, beyond and beyond on the actual website, but having each little person kind of on their own website or in their own circle or even just on their in their Facebook posts, um, doing a little bit of that is another great way for us to extend the net that we have out there. Um, yeah. So, really for us to think about. Yeah, it's, it's something I've thought about, but the problem is, is I've always looked at it as like, my audience make, would make, I couldn't have an audience because the only audience would be like, people who are as weird as me will love everything and are constantly all over and never focused on anything for very long. And I feel like that's a really weird niche to it. <laughs> I, I think it's a weird niche, but it's a bigger niche than you might think it is. Oh, good here, Shannon's coming in. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is because I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I take in politics and social sciences and, and I do enjoy science as a sort of philo philosophy of, of, it, of the science rather than like the real gritty, neat and details of science. I enjoy, I enjoy what people are trying, you know, the intention behind what science is trying to do rather than memorizing hey, everything everyone is doing. Hi, Shannon. Sorry for the uh, for the the hiccups in actually getting getting everybody on. So glad glad Anton and Shannon you were able to join. Another piece that I'd love to chat about. Um, so uh, Anton Z has gotten a, you know the next session going with AI two. There's already a list of things that are their potential asks, and I I very much want to see how much we can work um, to to nail those different asks to to find the people who they're trying to source and to figure out how to how to help them with all of their pieces because having them impressed is a great way for us to be able to to yeah. move on working with other sponsors as well and to working with them in a more serious way so i don't know if you all had a, a chance to look at the list that he posted. i was i was in the call <laughs> okay brilliant so so yeah uh... let's try to as aggressive like, again as aggressively as we can let's try to source the people and figure out how we can help move those pieces forward um, over the um, with regards to like supporting for Chinese either translators or even just people who can read Chinese to source the right things before they put through some sort of translation um, I think Mindy popped up um, of, uh, and I think she is of either Ch she has Chinese or she reads Chinese or speaks Chinese well enough to do it but I was going through the database today and I noticed somebody really high on the list who's a German girl 
really interesting. It seems like a really interesting lady, but she studied in Beijing and is fluent in Chinese. And I'm like, and she's a data analyst, data scientist, but works in a law firm. And I'm like, you're a bit of a polymath and I like the sound of you already. Um, she's one of the first people on the list. She's right high up. Um, and I'm like, if I, could, and I looked on her LinkedIn and I was like, she would be, if I could, if we could get her engaged and, and focused, I think she'd be an amazing asset to have on. But I imagine she's, honestly, she was like the top of her class. She was like in the 0.2% of classes and stuff. I'm like, she is probably so busy because she's again, super bright. I just, I just realized one of the people I've seen in the VR circles that I'm running in, one of his other companies that he runs um, specifically is teaching Mandarin to people. Uh, and I think possibly teaching English to Mandarin speakers. So he might be a good person who we, who we could try to, to tap. The other person uh, or, or group, Archer uh, reminded me it's scale.ai in terms of the annotation. They had offered some services to us we might see whether we could connect them up with AI too, uh, and and that would be a great way to do it. Have what what do they do? What do scale What does scale they, AI do? Um, they they do um, training and validation data for AI applications. So uh, annotation and tagging of of pieces for AI use uh, is is their wheelhouse, and they've offered to help us. So so making that connection would be great. We can we can go through our Slack channels to to dig out the details. Uh, so we were just kind of, we've been doing a little bit of an overview. I don't know, Shannon, if you have anything kind of from the day. How did the daily call go? Oh, I think it went okay. Uh, a few of you were there. You guys can probably tell me better. <laughs> but uh, um, It went fine. It went fine. I think I was, I was pretty low energy, so I didn't really input very much unlike normal. So it seemed quiet, but maybe it's just because I wasn't filling the, uh, all the empty spaces like usual. <laughs> okay you know it, it, quiet meeting can be good getting to the point yeah. is good also some of the time because, I, I don't know about you i am also entirely exhausted and i'm not even working as hard as a lot of the people here so <laughs> um, you probably are i think there's, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's an illusion of all of the other people seem to be doing so much and you're not doing enough and i think we again it's a little bit like imposter syndrome but i think it's just like everyone else is a workaholic and i need to try and at least keep and i don't know if we all are but i definitely think we all we all lean towards it, but the side effect that we all think everyone else is doing more, we feel right. like we shouldn't, and we're just perpetually pushing each other further and further, and we're just going to end up knacking ourselves out if we're not careful. It's true, I, and I, I'm among the people who, like, I, I work full-time, and I have another job outside of this as well that's, like, a low number of hours, but still, it, you know, it's, and I've got family that I'm with right now, so it's, you know, it's, it's fun keeping plates yeah. in the air, so I, I wish I could do as much as Tyler, but, um, I'm not uh, doing I'm anything. Kind of... I'm just I'm just consuming <laughs> a lot of data. I'm I'm consume. I don't do a lot. I just read a lot and listen a lot and occasionally. That's, that's, that's chime very important. In. That's key. So, yeah. Like if you were on the podcast, you'd know what to say. I would know about a couple of things, and that would be it. Like so, this it's good to have a general knowledge. I I found even just the amount I've been able to attend meetings gives you a better scope of what's going on. I think it's actually really important. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's that being said, I actually bridge. don't have time to be here right now, so I just wanted to check in on, um, yeah, on for in. things that are, yeah. um, like, uh, I, one thing I was displeased about um, was that we had nothing to report about the webinar progress this morning. Right. Um, so I was really, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I joined late. Um, did we already cover that? We haven't covered the webinar yet, no. Um, and again, I think today, most of my day has been spent either, like, building gerbil mazes with my kids and doing other stuff that has been non-this. Non um, but yeah, I which don't, we need to do. It's important. Right, we totally do. I'm not sure if we have any progress on the on the webinar piece uh, from today. Not. I've not even opened it. Like I said, um, I've done who is three hour-long webinars today. Oh, so. I apologize. Start. I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off. Who is in charge of reaching out to um, paper people, basically, the paper authors? Is that Marco or is that sure. someone on the bridge? I don't think we um, we officially decided how we were going to reach out to paper because I don't think we said because we, we had like the 9,000 people, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to like curate who we're going to target and reach yes. out to with a bit more of a meaningful ask rather than just like shotgun the wall and see what gets hit, which is, you know, it's a messy way of doing it. Um, right. but the problem is, is someone needs to sit down and curate and that curator needs to be knowledgeable about the networks we're trying to curate from which requires a weird intersection of knowledge across both the medical and the ai and who's going to be a good 
fit for both of them things. And that's kind of a, such a niche thing. I don't think anyone can really deliver on it, which is why we need to sort of synthesize I think, it. I think the simple way to do that is to look at those, look at the papers that are most cited. Look at the papers that are most cited. Those are going to be who are closest in on the networks of the people we'd want to be contacting. And, and we contact those people. I wonder if somebody would be willing to hop into either the domain experts channel, uh, that's probably the place to do it, and see if somebody would be willing to help us out with that. Um, Marco did also ask me if anyone has this list, this supposed list of authors. Um, I didn't know what to tell him, so I just pointed him back to the comments on the guide. Um, so does anyone, Daniel, do you know? Where this Let me theoretically see. exists. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to. It's it's been scraped by some clever piece of AI somewhere, so uh, it exists. I, I think if we checked with Brandon, he he would be one of the people who would know. Okay. I'm trying to remember who it was who actually did that piece of of the enrichment. Okay. Um, it's either going to be Brandon or Ties, or maybe Risk. I feel like Ties did a decent. They've done a decent amount of statistical scraping as well. But it could have been Geo because Geo have been putting enriching and working alongside like task the task data NLP people. So I don't know. Okay. That's the problem with distributed systems. Sometimes it's no idea what three steps away is doing. <laughs> like this is yeah, this is why I, I'm pro a little bit of labeling. I know I know we had this discussion about if labeling is useful or not. I think this is why it is. I, I um, totally agree, yeah. But yes, uh, I'm pro-organizing. I'm, pro I'm just I'm I'm pro-organizing. I'm just not pro-forcing organization. That's well, the problem. Well, no, which, which we can't, right? Because none of us are we're, we're right. all volunteers anyway. Um, that's exactly. what I say. It's great, and but it has its it has its difficult spots. Um, so, is somebody so the, there's, willing there's to a, talk to Brandon then about this? The other place where if, where someone can hop in is to hop into the author data channel because my hunch will be, that'll be the place where all the people who are working on that are. There's there's 20 people who are involved in the author data channel. I've not oh. even been in there, but that's what probably that? the channel that's so that's to do with the, that's yeah, to do with sourcing the authors of the, the, the papers and making sure that there's like the emails are valid and they're the right people. And, and the, yeah, it's a real bit. I've just not been, it's literally probably one of the 10 channels that I've yeah. just not gone into. I'm getting to the point where I don't want to go into more channels. I'm trying to actually cure it downwards. Yeah, I have. Because I'm I everywhere. Have, so if, if so, if someone's willing to to hop on that, that would be awesome. And I think again, it could be a simple ask. We can simply point them towards the paper uh, on the webinar um, and let them know what it is that we're looking for. That we're looking to figure out who would be. The, and, and again, like let's check in with Arthur also to figure out like what exactly is it that we're trying to do in terms of the people who we're bringing in uh, to to look at that. But, but that seems like it would be a good, a good way to do it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find the Trello card that addresses this. Um, so that. I thought it was in, maybe it's in doing. One. I think you can search the board if you look, if you know the words, when it will point to it for that you. That might be part of the problem. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. The card isn't put in the way that I, uh, I might I might change the way the card is in a sec. In the chat here, I've linked to two of the cards that are there. One is for create Google Google Docker webinar structure. The other one is the one around post submission feedback. No post submission webinar modules personas. I have. I was gonna say I have two two cards look like they're in doing right now, and uh, those. Yeah, I, I think maybe. That's part of it. So I guess we could we could alter the make list of post submission feedback webinar personas. Maybe we could make this more specific now. Yeah. Make uh make list of um specific specific post submission feedback webinar. I mean, we want someone from AI two there, ideally, and like some of the people who have sort of supported us so far, just to see what we've produced and a bit more of a close-up okay. dialogue around what we've made. So they're, they're the obvious candidates for me so far is like, yeah, people who are already involved, like stakeholders for lack of a bit of, you know, to use the parlance of the industry because they've already put something up or they've already, you know, yeah. stuck the flag in the ground saying that they want to support us. But um, bringing, bringing the medical 
medical field into it to be able to give us that because basically we need user research we do we right. need like really good quality user research and the problem with user research is it's messy and slow and complicated and you've got to find the right users <laughs> Um, I mean, again, I, I think we can just take a more iterative approach to it. I think we, and, and this is where, I think this needs to, it doesn't need to be the be all end all webinar. I think it needs to be, let's get enough of the people who we think are the right people in the room who have the right skill set to look at what we're trying to do and to then both help us refine it, but then help us also figure out who it is we should be talking to. Because um, I think everything that we're trying to do here, like ish is the initial motto. It's, it's ish and iteration rather than trying to, to perfect. perfect it in one go. No, it, is, it is a thing I struggle with, though. I struggle with turning off the perfected approach. It's, I don't like it. I don't like the, oh, it's probably good enough. It's like, I don't like this feeling. Actually, that, that, um, this, is, this is the perfect document, the one that you'd linked to here, Shannon, the, the post-submission presentation webinar plan, because you've listed, mm -hmm. there, someone's listed that bunch of different groups that we can be checking through. Right, I was just going to say someone has updated the LinkedIn and yeah. I did, yeah, and that's what I asked stuff, Marco yeah. to check out. Um, do you still want to have someone hop on the author channel to get more info or? Maybe, or, or would you be able to just check in with Marco to kind of see where, where he's at and if he's, if that's something that he's on? I've not seen him, yes. I've not seen him around okay. today, but I've not been around right. for all but he's, of it, so. He's in Ukraine also, right. so it's right. like Yeah, but he's right closer now. to me. He's, no, but he's two hours oh, right. in front of me. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm up for a lot more of your day than you are. <laughs> But you're here next to, next door to me, Tyler. Obviously. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it's one a.m. Remember. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, okay, I say actually, I think uh, Daniel and I are in the t same time zone, um, technically. Yeah. And yeah, okay. Uh, right. Okay. So you actually actually you are in a better position to check in with Marco than I am. Do you yeah, want to do it? Yeah, I'll I'll find Marco tomorrow. Okay. Great. Maybe... So I'll just. You know what? I can also like there's there's just a few groups there and it's pretty much a form letter that we're gonna put together, I assume, to to send into those groups to say, like, here's here's the here's who we are, here's the thing that we've done. We're trying to put together a webinar to explain the tools that we're making that we think are geared towards your demographic. You know, would would some people from here be interested in checking that out? That's, that's, that's a very simple ask. It's a very low level yeah, ask, but you, exactly. you think you already get some people. I mean, what's the what how big an audience could we handle? Um, that's a good question. I guess it depends on what tool we could use. Um, I think we I could, mean, we, we go could on, you go. up to about 250 people. Yeah, because I mean, we could do it with, yeah, we could do everyone, you know, everyone in and only the lack of a better word, the panel. So the people who are giving the posts and the discussions um, and then take questions. So like a proper webinar rather than our big open forum conversations. Well, yeah, I think it's not meant to be that. I think it's meant to be really, I mean, the, you know, if, if you've checked out the webinar plan piece, like there's risk subject matter expert interview, going through some mm -hmm. people, and then again, three other subject matter expert interviews. So it's more of a chance to try to, to dive through the discussion, explain them, and then have some feedback happen from that. But then I think if we had a wider audience of people who are there who have that same expertise, that we can we can both draw on them and then they become those people who can help kind of dandelion bring in the other people. Okay. Okay. Um but, but again, why don't we why don't we check in with Arthur? Um I'm mean, actually I'm gonna be talking to him in a second. And so um I'll I'll double check in terms of the goals for that. Uh, Great. and then I can just try to throw that together this this evening maybe. Okay, so you're you're gonna you're gonna write the basically the, the proto invite? Yeah, I, I can try. I can I can write a thing that we can then kind of take a take a look at, and then I can fire that out over onto those LinkedIn groups uh, tomorrow. Wonderful. Um, uh, proto proto invitation to the webinar. So I'm just putting all this stuff on Trello because I found myself asking Tyler in the general meeting if he was doing a thing I thought he was doing because I didn't write it down anywhere. Um, <laughs> no, that's so, great. Tyler probably didn't appreciate me calling him out for no reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay, let's see. As many things as I'm working on right now, it's weird to think that I probably have fewer direct actions that I'm, I signed up for than most of the other people. Um, 
Okay. Well, um, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about myself. I, I did try to talk to Sergei uh, um, Miroshnichenko, but I haven't heard anything from him yet um, regarding uh, trying to reach out to pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so it's possible I might do a shout on a different channel just to say, anyone want to help with this? Um, and uh, maybe I could check the, the roster to see if there's anyone else who has pharmacy on their keywords list. I actually am overdue to update the Corona Y list anyway uh, with okay. the new people. So, um, oh, I'm also currently following up with my company about um, this the block website. Um, they were under the impression that it wasn't using secure protocol. It is. Uh, okay. So I don't know why they're under that I think, impression. I think it wasn't before, and then Anton added in the SSL certificate. Um, well, okay, I guess maybe they just didn't get the update. So I, I, um, he, the guy I talked to said he would be checking with his team. I haven't heard in a okay. couple of days, so I will probably bug him again. And if I don't hear today, he's in India. So, okay. um, that's everything shifted. <laughs> um, but at least, at least I made contact with somebody who didn't just close my ticket automatically. No. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so uh, baby steps, I guess. Oh, that's good. Also, I'm going to be talking with Archer after this call a little bit about the whole gamification piece. We're talking about a lot of things, but one of the things I'm going to talk about is the badges. Because I think one of the ideas is, uh, I know he's, he's keen to have make sure that the badges are kind of fun. And I think that's fine. But I want to I wanna also, for me, the badges are, no. they, can, they can be uh, entertaining, but, but the main functional role in terms of how we self-organize. And they make it an easier thing for people to be able to both feel their own acknowledgement and stuff for, for what they've done, but also to quickly be able to see like, oh, okay, here's somebody who is like an expert in NLP, or here's somebody or other who, um, who, who runs a blog or who does these different pieces. And, and by having that, it'll make it a lot easier. Because right now, it's a sea of different names. And we have like, I have a small handful of people who are like, oh yeah, here's, here's three useful things to know about that person. And then a whole bunch of people I just know nothing at all about. So well, don't you ever just check their cards? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, you mean the, you mean their profile cards? Yeah. Yeah. I think those who, who wish to share have, have learned to put all that stuff on their cards. I think I think I think some who wish who wish to share have, and I think a lot of people don't really know how to like what they're doing in Slack necessarily. <laughs> I, I, some some list of things to do. All right, you know, I've been watching <laughs> I've been watching Slack tutorials to say to see if I can find one that I basically could just link rather than making a new one and it yeah. looks like there's nothing that's current enough and relevant enough so i'm gonna have to probably make one and it's that, just again that surprises me i i have recently oh, learned gosh. this is probably not news to anyone else i've recently learned that like companies use slack to do all of their stuff and right. i just thought it was more for private and just like you know small scale project stuff i didn't think it was used at actual corporations but it is oh yeah 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 for sure that's that's that's, that's where i know it from is from using, using it with other companies. what's that sorry i missed that just just slack that? in terms of it was just me not knowing that slack was a thing that people actually use Oh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's used by 8 million people and it, and it runs like a good sort of several very, very large companies. That's what I'm so, learning. So, I would say yeah. this is news to me, but um, okay. So I mean, well, what, is in, what, is it, what does Intel use internally? Is it just all emails or is there anything equivalent? Yeah, there's, there's stuff. I don't know if I should talk about it, right. but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. on my work computer, which I am right now. So, um, but I mean, yeah, other stuff. That is it like a proprietary, is it a prepar is it just a different system? All right. Yeah, 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 I say. Um, yeah, understood. Yes. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, so it's, it's 517. Thanks. Sorry that we've gone over time. Um, those things down for now. I'll follow up with uh, getting that piece written and then I can send those out onto those groups uh, tomorrow. Um, I've uh, messaged Marco so I'm more likely to get that in the morning because he's two hours in perfect. front of me so I'll get it earlier and then um, what's, what's going on tomorrow? That's, I've got honestly it's this digital week this week in this next two weeks in Leeds so there's right. just there's loads of really interesting webinars. And part of the reason why I'm going is for me and also to be like, if I can just steal loads and loads of really good webinar resources and just like share them for with sure. the community. Cause that that's a great idea. I'm like, some of them are like organizational stuff, how to deal with, you know, remote world. And, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, this is interesting resources that I'm just going to throw at the community and, and line them up. 
Sounds good. All right. So have a good night, y'all, or, or day, or morning, or whatever it is uh, turning into. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. You too, guys. Bye.